All right, today begins our discussion of thermodynamics. <clears throat> uh, thermodynamics at its core is, especially looking at the word, heat, movement. We're going to be looking at heat and how it moves. So uh, the way that we're going to do that is by looking at matter in a new way. We're going to look at something called the kinetic model, and we're going to describe heat in terms of that, temperature in terms of that, and pressure in terms of the, in terms of the kinetic model. And everything has to do with molecules and then moving, so let's get into it. Um, for the kinetic model, what we're going to do is pretend that something solid, so let's say we have a brick of aluminum, okay, solid brick of aluminum, instead of looking just at the molecules, we're concerned with how the molecules in that brick behave. So for the kinetic model, the first thing we're going to do is pretend that instead of being solid things in a crystal lattice structure, all of the matter inside of that brick of aluminum uh, is an ideal gas. And what that allows us to do is, is say that um, those molecules are moving around in there, bouncing around in there, and they're going to behave like an ideal gas. They're all going to be identical. They're all going to collide elastically, which means they don't lose energy when they hit each other, and that all particles obey Newton's laws and behave randomly. Basically, what that means is for any given substance, it's got a whole bunch of identical balls inside of it. Those identical balls represent the molecules inside of it, and each one of those is moving randomly um, with different speeds bouncing around. That's the kinetic model. They are identical, they collide elastically, they obey Newton's laws, and they go randomly. What this allows us to do is make generalizations that help us see heat a little bit better. So yes, we know that this doesn't actually happen inside of solid objects, but it allows us to see how heat moves throughout it better. So, heat inside of that substance. Um, you just saw all those things um, bouncing around. All those little uh, red particles, these are blue, but you saw all those little red particles bouncing around, moving at random, some going faster, some going slower, running into each other. So, each particle has a bunch of different things. One, is mass. The other is velocity. What that means is that each particle has a kinetic energy and it's equal to one half mv squared. We will not be making any calculations with that. But each particle is going to have a kinetic energy that we're dealing with. We're saying our definition for heat is the sum of all kinetic energy. of all particles. That's what heat is. It's all of that energy added together. So, um, looking at heat, that gives us two ways of, of getting more heat or, or, or getting less heat. All right. So, way number one, more particles equals more heat. Okay, so if I compare one gram of aluminum to 1,000 kilograms of aluminum, by the fact that there's more particles in the 1,000 kilograms, it's going to have more heat. That's one way I can have more heat, is more particles. That gives me more uh, mass when it comes down to kinetic energy. The other way I can have more heat is to have more kinetic energy. I make those particles work. More kinetic energy. I make those particles move faster and faster and faster. So, more particles is more heat. More kinetic energy is more heat. And we're going to look at that uh, through the same demonstration, putting more heat into an object with both of those things. And we're going to look at what that does to temperature, because that's the next thing. That's the next thing we're going to talk about. 
All right, so looking at this, we have a bunch of particles, these little red particles moving around and bouncing around inside of, of, of a given thing. Looking at heat, if we were to take the velocity and the mass of each one of those and calculate the kinetic energy of each one of these 100 or 98 particles moving around, that would tell me how much total heat I had because it's the total sum of all those things added together. So, if I put a little fire underneath of that and I add heat to it, you see those particles beginning to move around faster and faster and faster. That's because um, each one of those particles now has more kinetic energy. If I take away heat from that, if I cool it down, we'll eventually start to see those particles moving slower and slower and slower. That's what heat is. Temperature is the average. Okay, So if I have 180,000 particles. I'm going to take the heat divided by 180,000 particles and what that's going to give me is, is basically uh, the average kinetic energy. That's what we call temperature. Now we measured in different ways but it's the average kinetic energy of all the particles. So I can have a tiny substance at uh, 46 degrees Celsius or a large amount of the same substance at 46 degrees Celsius. What this means is that the average, a single average particle in there has about the same speed. They're moving around just as fast as an average particle in another substance. But because this one is smaller, it has less heat, and this one has more heat. That's the first important thing we need to know about temperature. Even though this has less heat because it's smaller and this has more heat because it's larger, they can be at the same temperature. Uh, the next thing about temperature that we're going to look at that we need to know, the next thing that we're going to look at temperature that we need to know, so we don't need to do all of this stuff anymore, is how we measure it. So in, in physics we use degrees Celsius or we use Kelvin. So zero degrees Celsius water freezes. Hundred degrees Celsius water evaporates. We'll talk a little bit about phase changes later. Kelvin, okay, um, 273 Kelvin is 0 degrees Celsius and water freezes. Uh, 373 Kelvin, that's 100 degrees Celsius. They're the same scale, they just start at different points. Kelvin is absolute. So for Kelvin, 0 Kelvin means average kinetic energy of all molecules is zero. And we'll look at what that means up there too and what that looks like as particles move around. But it's absolute, so that zero Kelvin corresponds to an average kinetic energy of zero. All right, so looking at this, we're going to look at temperature. Uh, as the particles are moving around right now, the average kinetic energy of all of them is 71 Kelvin. It's, it's the average. So if we add heat overall, we're seeing things speeding up and moving a lot faster. Now, the overall heat increased, and that did increase the number of particles, so we also see an increase in the temperature. Again, adding, adding more heat is going to give me an increase in the temperature. Same time, if I take away heat, I see these things starting to slow down. And on average, each of them has less and less kinetic energy. So we have less and less temperature. Now, looking at this, we continue to remove heat. They move slower and slower and slower and slower and slower and slower. The closer we get to zero Kelvin, zero average kinetic energy, the closer it gets to each one of these particles no longer moving. 
zero Kelvin is the place where we have no more kinetic energy. Now this thing's not going to let me get to it. That brings us to pressure. The kinetic model also gives us a nice way to look at pressure. And we can look at it again, but if you look at that, that video that we're going to see, that you saw, each one of these things is moving. Each one of those particles is moving. And eventually it's going to hit the wall. The more and more particles I have hitting the wall, the more and more pressure I'm going to have. The faster those particles hit the wall, the more pressure I'm going to have. Those two things contribute to pressure. More particles equals more pressure. More movement or more heat equals more pressure. Pressure is force per unit area. So what we're doing is taking the sum of all of the forces that are running into that wall or that, that surface over an area and getting the pressure from that. If I throw more particles at that, I get more pressure. If I have those particles moving faster and faster, I get more and more pressure. We'll look at that too. All right, so we're back at nothing moving. So let's add a little bit more heat. Um, and as that happens, let's, it's taken a while. As we get more heat, these things are starting to move around more and more and more and more and run into the walls of the thing more and more. If we look at this pressure thing, we're starting to see that as they hit the wall more and more and more, we get more and more pressure. As we continue to add heat, we again see more collisions with the wall and harder collisions. That's all pressure is. More collisions of more particles hitting the wall faster and faster and faster. Um, we can increase that pressure even more by, by decreasing the volume. But what you see happening there is that those particles are moving around faster and faster and faster. They're hitting the wall harder and harder and harder. And we have even more pressure. And that's all pressure is.